bad, me sick, me reggae feel. Reggaeville Family Summer Jam 2024 is on. With me is Jason Panton, who is about to, I want to say, mash up the Dubwise Jamaica area tonight. Dubwise, that is an area where people can ex experience music tonight here. Mm -hmm. But it is also something people can experience music all over the world, I want to say, because Dubwise is a thing in Jamaica, first of all, also Trinidad recently Mexico, you name it, Miami, tell me, what is the Dubwise experience like? What is so special about this vibe? Am I holding this? Or are you, you holding it? You I'll, hold it. Hold it. Yeah, I'll hold right, it. I'll hold it. So thank you, Munchi. I'm <laughs> happy to be here in Germany. It's my second or third time here. Um, so the Dubwise experience is about um, preserving reggae in, a, in an authentic way to a new audience. Um, big up Queen Omega, big up. Well, go on. No man, I disturb me, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, she's been to Dubwise too. <laughs> yeah, she did Dubwise two times in Miami, once in Trinidad, I think, so yeah. Um, yeah, so it's to preserve and present reggae music. Um, in, in, in an authentic way to a new audience and, and have it really be represented um, by, I think it makes a difference when things are presented by a Jamaican Rasta man, woman, whatever, right? I think, I think um, it makes a difference. So the authenticity comes from us knowing our, nobody knows our culture better than us. Sometimes, sometimes because there's a lot of, um, you know, cultural loss happening right now with, with Jamaica, with our reggae culture. Um, so it's to preserve that and keep it interesting so that maybe somebody who's 25, 24, 22, 21, them hear about this dubwise thing, you know, because younger people are attracted to brands, you know. So if you don't really establish a brand, you're not going to be able to get that younger mm -hmm. audience. So it's really to present it in a way that is authentic, but still young and fun, and that we can appeal to people. And hopefully, even if they didn't love reggae coming in, or they didn't know War in a Babylon, or they didn't know Sata Amasagana, or they didn't know Marcus Garvey by Burning Spear, they didn't know that, when they hear that stuff interspersed with a protege, or a Jesse, or a Chronix, or or even interspersed with a little dancehall or a little afro or whatever, um, by creating that, it brings them into that music that they may have not known. And you know, we love Shazam and people can <laughs> get the song in real time. So that's the hope is like through fusing it, blending it, mixing it properly, um, that we, we, we br keep bringing in younger people into reggae music um, because the, you can't stop the youth and you can't fight the youth. So the only way to keep the youth is to create a product that is interesting mm -hmm. to them. Absolutely important, yeah, man. Mm. Since March 2022, you're also doing that with a location, at a location, the Dubwise Cafe mm -hmm. on Lady Musgrave Road in Kingston, in the heart of Kingston, so to speak. Um, tell me a bit. How is the experience like in that particular space? What makes this place so special? And we can now also say, gladly, despite the hurricane, you, I, I saw the pictures today, yeah. you got through everything good. Yeah. yeah. So the purpose of Dubwise Cafe was really, I saw a trend happening where, you know, Rasta culture and Jamaican culture to an extent reggae culture doesn't function like a lot of other cultures in that they're not alcohol driven um, events right like if you want to make the least money possible have a reggae party uh, uh, for liquor for liquor you get me and so what was happening is that venues um, even when in the early days of Dubwise we had to bounce to a lot of venues yeah because the venues obviously their revenue is you know it's like when you strip it down entertainment drives alcohol sales alcohol sales pays for entertainment right that is 
at the lowest common denominator. Um, and because reggae Rasta culture d doesn't really promote that level of uh, consumption, um, we have a problem holding on to venues, keeping events going, because if you don't have Roots or Georgie Wine or this or that, um, a lot of times our patrons are not interested in buying four Red Stripe or two Mojitos, or etc. And these are the things that keep things going. Mm -hmm. So I realized this after having a rough time with Dubwise in the early part, bouncing from venue to venue, um, which worked out because it kept it interesting. It, it worked out for the best, but um, ultimately I knew that in order to preserve Dubwise um, and preserve what we were doing and kind of like put our, our flag pole down, like we are here and we did this and we're present, we needed a physical space, right? I learned that when I had the other store, um, when I had Base Kingston years before, which a lot of this stuff stemmed from, like Live from Kingston came from Base Kingston, Dubwise came from Base Kingston, like all these things sprung from that community um, that I, I, I was told by, by uh, one of my mentors, he said, Jason, once you get brick and mortar, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't, his name is um, Omar Shakir, um, his son is now one of my partners that helped to start the Wise Cafe, but he, his dad was my mentor um, and was like, you know, once you have a physical location, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized that to complete the piece of the puzzle to Dubwise and have it be something that can live for another 10 years or another seven years at that point, um, we need to have a physical location where um, we can govern our affairs accordingly. And as Gregor Isaac said, Rasta business is Rasta business, right? Mm -hmm. So um, in order to make this happen, I had a pretty clear vision at a certain point um, that we needed to have it be a cooperative space. Mm -hmm. It couldn't be, this is Jason's restaurant. This is, J it had to feel cooperative. Mm -hmm. So, um, came up with the concept of a vegetarian friendly food court mm -hmm. and venue and um, it in the beginning was hard to get people to buy into that concept because mm -hmm. a lot of people thought well how me can have my food mm -hmm. and then our next man have him food right next to me mm -hmm. who, who might be doing something similar um, and then our next man can have but um, through the blessing of the Almighty, we found the right people that understand the mission uh, and understand a co-op, what a cooperative means. And, um, you know, it's never been done before. There's no vegetarian food court in Jamaica. There's not even a vegetarian food court in South Florida, right? Or New York, or it doesn't exist. So what we've done, I don't think I've shouted from the mountaintop enough about that, because really we're just into the work, not the talking. Um, but but it's a very unique concept um and it helps us not have to worry about how much beer i sell or thing i sell at rubber dub tuesdays or how much thing i sell at future roots or, like it's important but the, the, the functionality of the business is based around the cooperative partners in the space and um, the events can kind of pay for themselves that way uh, so that was the vision at some point when i was building it and everything that that we, we figured out and carlene of course has helped with that bringing events um and the the whole family that 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 has helped put this thing together to make it work so we mentioned the cafe, we mentioned the Dubwise event series, and you also mentioned, for example, Base Kingston, which is a clothing store that um, was also the place where a lot of, I want to say, legendary live events were happening um, around the 2010, so to speak, mm -hmm. years when the reggae revival was on the rise. I mean, guys, if you look up the Sperlina Chronics live video, for example, that was shot there yeah. right outside the shop and thing. And those are just like three of the things that I associate you with because there is Ina Worldwide, there is Words on Empower, there is the Shrine Miami, <laughs> what else is there? You name it so just to get an idea of what you do how many instagram accounts do you manage at the moment jason um hold on <laughs> let me see not counting mine 
let's see what we got here i'm gonna tell you right now in yeah. all honesty it's yeah, ridiculous yeah. it's actually ridiculous yeah, all right so i have dubwise jamaica dubwise cafe dubwise miami um uh the shrine miami which is my afrobeat event um romaine virgo steering me down while i'm doing an interview <laughs> and <laughs> yeah so so quite quite a few events um and spaces um you know i think my my whole thing has been to try to create spaces for the culture um where people can be free to express themselves and where we can curate and help create really good talent so um you know lots of of good things have happened from dubwise you know um so many artists um i would say it's been a very reciprocal relationship meaning we've given platform to artists to do some legendary stuff and through that platform um dubwise has become worthy of note in the reggae space or the jamaican cultural space or the caribbean space um so i feel like Everything that I've done really is just things that I thought were cool that I would want to go to, you know? So like dub wise, it was like, all right, well, we have dub club and it's excellent, but like we need somewhere on the flat that's like a little bit more accessible to go to. That, that was literally the conversation, you know? Um, and then uh, um, dub wise Miami was like, my bridging knew um, a guy, Sven, Corey Chase knew this uh, half German, half Jamaican guy named Sven, who was opening, um, opened a, like a speakeasy behind a taco place. And I was like, okay. And, <laughs> and I went and looked, I was like, wow, this room is perfect. So, um, you know, we brought Dubwise there. Um, and then like the shrine as an as a Afrobeat event, I was like, you know, what if we really mixed Afro afro vibes with um dance hall and and like other caribbean stuff together like properly properly you know what if we did that and it worked out like magically you know was, billboard voted it best afrobeats party in america um and the accolades just keep coming i just got afrobeats dj of the year in miami you know so um i literally just create spaces that I think are cool and don't exist and I read somewhere that like leadership is finding the things that don't exist mm -hmm. and creating them you know um, so I, I just whatever I think is cool um, if there's a consensus amongst like my very tight-knit group of people I call when I have a crazy idea mm -hmm. once everyone is on the same page like yeah that sounds dope then I get to work and try and make it happen so that's how live from kingston happened i mean you know like live from kingston literally happened like me and protege like talking and he's like yo none of them promote it and i book me we say all right then we'll we'll book ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like we could do it ourselves that's what that's it was literally just like out of a marcus garvey self-reliance type of philosophy like yeah we can do it ourselves mm -hmm. so we did you know and that became a whole thing um, so it's just creating spaces for the culture and those who appreciate the culture uh, so that it, it doesn't have to be compromised or watered down in a way. It, you know what you're coming for, you know. You're going to hear other stuff at Dubwise, but you know what you're coming for. You're going to hear, you'll still hear reggae or whatever, other things at the shrine, but you know what you're coming there for, you know. So we just try to make it like a, a safe space for people to grow from so my some of my djs at the shrine one of them is on tour right now with rema and like he literally came over to us from another event space and like blew up boom he's out you know another guy he started his own event and he's touring and that was a product of the shrine as well so it's beautiful to see you know it's like when the students start to pass the teacher that's when you know you're a great a, a great instructor right yeah 
Um, but you mentioned how you come up with concepts and ideas. Do you put a lot of like analysis into the preparation of your things to say, okay, this is what exists, this is what does not exist, this is what we need, this is how we're going to do this, or you are more free floating and just go with the flow? No, I think, um, you know, I went to college, I like have a master's, I, I did half of a PhD. And um, I think through that training, especially in my master's, um, I had an instructor named Dr. Altman. Um, he was German Jewish <laughs> instructor. It's like every Germans keep coming up. Um, um, he, Dr. Altman was, he made me, through that program, I understood that creativity could be monetized. I honestly did not have that connection in my head. I was like a like a art student, like art for art's sake, mm -hmm. not art for monetary commodity thing. Um, but through that program, I, I I started to understand that you can monetize your creativity and your art in an authentic way, where you're not selling out anything, um, and from that it's like my brain it's like literally you know Jamaica say a chip lick like something like a light bulb went off in my head like oh okay so we can authentically monetize like ideas and creative concepts and I just from there my brain just started working in a different way and I started I and I clothing brand um, then I was a part of we are massive another brand right and so so yeah it was just like the, the light went off and I never looked back from there once I realized okay the stuff in my head I can turn it into capital to, to live a, a, a respectable life you know and and be happy doing what I'm doing creating for me although I'm happy creating for everyone you know you have to fill your cup first right so cr creating these things helps me fill my cup and then i can fill the cup of so many others and those who realize who don't even think they have a cup you know so yeah you mentioned how many instagram accounts you have for example and the projects that you're involved in how do you keep track of things of projects because of, of timelines as well do you actually write on board still or you have a book or you do that online or um, so I have a few people that help me. Um, I have like somebody who is responsible for like travel and arrangements um, and like uh, booking of like DJs for the events. So she, her name's Rosa, Big Up Rosa. So she helps me kind of keep track of those things. Um, and then I have uh, with Dubwise Cafe, I have a person there, Yana, who helps kind of keep that together um and then i have um janika who helps me with dubwise jamaica i'm shouting this out because these are all like yeah. these are all women and um i really try to they get paid and I, i try to empower them as much as possible um i don't think any of them would say i'm a micromanager maybe maybe not but i don't think so um so i have a few people that really help me um keep it together um, and the shrine has its own team, um, which which uh, helps me to keep that together. Aisha, big up, um, and the DJs also just kind of you know help me like, w you know we've created a format like I I don't um I don't do the Oprah method, which is like Jason has to be way at the front in order for things to be effective and work. Um, it, I go to the front when it's necessary, but really and truly, I like things to work, whether I am there or not, because I think that's tr um, I read a book, uh, and it talked about, I think it was like the servant leadership book, um, but it, it basically the whole point in leading is to create the transcendent leadership, right, where you create things that are transcendent beyond just me. It's not an I man thing like I have all these businesses and everybody listen to my advice. No, it's like um, these are just ideas that are executed and with a proper team and and um, the right motivation. Like we can do this and we could do it forever, you know, for a very long time. And you know, when my beard gets fully gray and I'm ready to like retire to a small 
island or place somewhere and have a vinyl bar that's just you know you could come with your kids and <laughs> right it, it um until then like i can still do what i'm doing but i don't have to be present for things to work and i've been very very careful to build things that are are like that that can sustain without me having to be directly i don't have to always de you know what i mean like I came this year. Next year, I might send DJ Mucho, who works with me in Miami. You know what I mean? Like, I've sent him on missions before. I sent him to Cali Roots to go to go DJ. You know, like we we create a format, a sound, a way of doing things, and um, with that, we can kind of take that and do it different ways. And I, I, the same thing for events. You know, there's a, a method that I have, and once you learn it, you can move outward with it apparently also you still have enough time to read a book every now and then <laughs> you mentioned something before that I really want to tap into a little bit more because you said a brand is important mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you exactly that question how important is a name a, a corporate look for things because you are into art especially tell me and maybe can give the people some advice what they can do to create a brand and to push that brand so you know i think social media has done a lot for people um to kind of understand branding um i think the most important thing about branding is um it's something that's authentic to you and that you're passionate about because if you're not passionate about it you're not gonna be able to maintain it no matter how sharp the brand is no matter how sharp your logo is no matter how um, shiny everything looks if you don't have the passion you won't be able to maintain it that's something that actually Rowan Marley told me I can't take credit for that so Rowan said it he's yeah big up bro he said you know you have to have the passion for what you're doing or else you'll never be able to sustain or maintain it and that stuck with me he said that a couple years ago and um, so I think to create a brand one you have to try to find a, 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 a a niche or something that is unique a unique angle right nothing is new under the sun it's it's not what you do it's how it's done right dub wise isn't the first reggae party <laughs> right you know reggaeville is not the first reggae website but it, you know what separates is how you do it right and how it's done so I think if you can create something that that adds adds so like when I was doing my PhD they said your dissertation should be a significant contribution to the existing body of work, right? And I've always stuck, that always has stuck. There's a few things over the years that have really stuck with me. So anything I do, like if somebody come to me to do a party, or I, okay, is this contributing something significant to the existing scene? You know, like, you know, does, does um, Brazil you know does rio de janeiro or pipa or brasilia or do, do these places need a dub wise or do they have somebody d doing that already that work if so we partner with them because I, i'm not here to dominate you know um and if there's not then let's see why there's not so it's always begins with a question you know like why sometimes the question is as simple as why not me Right. So like for people who out there who want to become DJs or something. OK, maybe you're going to play the song, same songs as we play or whatever. But why not? Why not you too? Or you want to play Afrobeat? OK, you're going to play the songs. Why not? Why not you? So sometimes the question is, is internal. Why not you? Sometimes the question is, why does this not exist in this way? And time, patience, money um, of, of you executing will determine Hey. <laughs> yeah um will determine um if the idea works so like there's been some ideas that i've had that have not worked right and you don't hear about them because right. they didn't work right <laughs> okay. yeah so so you you have you, nothing beats a failure like a try you have to try and um do something that's close to your heart um and and um and hopefully something that if it's not particularly unique makes a significant contribution to what exists and sometimes just you within yourself are that sometimes you are the brand sometimes you are the significant 
significant contribution that we needed. You get me, Munchie? It's your interview style that makes you different from anybody else. Everybody can have a phone and a mic and a thing and right and smile, but it's the thoughtfulness behind you and your unique thoughts as a human being, right? So sometimes it's just that. So e even for me as a DJ, I didn't DJ for a long time, not because I couldn't or I didn't want to. I wasn't I wasn't a hundred percent certain that I had a unique contribution to make and through a sister of mine when i was talking about it and i was like yo i'm 34 like do i really want to become a dj now blah 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 you know and she's like jason what the fuck does age have to do with it you know she's like yo if you have a passion for it, you want to do it and you're good at it. you know this music better than anybody i know i was like okay well i'll take that compliment and then i said i started trying it and I, I realized at, a, at some point on the journey after sucking for the first two years of doing it and getting closer to that 10,000 hours, I realized that I had something to contribute. I had something to contribute. My word sound, my style, my ideas of what to play after this and after this was, was a significant contribution to the sphere of music coming out of Jamaica and or representing Jamaica same in the afrobeats thing I, I had a unique perspective so sometimes it's just you it not have to be the brand or the business or the idea sometimes you're god's idea you have got idea you know so sometimes the idea what god have for you is the idea that needs to be out there to the world you mentioned a couple of artists um Protege, for example, Queen Omega, we mentioned her. Um, you've worked with a lot of artists throughout the years in various ways and aspects. Tell me a bit, who did you work with and who was the most impactful on you or the greatest joy? Um, so, I mean, Protege and I connected in 2009 and we really became friends before we actually did anything um, we just had similar visions he really had a lot of respect for the clothing brand the, the I and I stuff that I was doing and for base Kingston just as an entrepreneur you know I remember when chronics came to base Kingston the first time he was like yo I rasta run this spot yeah man I said yeah and, you know so um, I think proto definitely through our friendship a lot of things were empowered and a lot of like bro why don't we do this moments <laughs> took place um and then you know i met jesse in 2013 and i remember seeing him perform at live from kingston that's when i met him for the first time and i was like wow he's amazing like this is this type of spirit reggae music needs um that time he only had out like maybe two songs you know uh maybe three and uh, and uh and i was like wow and um years later i called him and i was like yo royal um everyone loves you and you have the spirit the world needs but like y y we need more music and he was like yo you know what you're right like you he's so he's a very humble person like um and uh and we started working together and um um the lion order song was a part of that Mo mo moment in time and um, and from there we started working on that album um, Royal and it later got Grammy nominated um, so I, you know I would say Jesse and Proto and of course um, Kimani who Marley who like again we're like friends it's like like a family you know it's like we worked on some projects together um for his album and and always throw ideas back and forth um yeah so i would say kim like you know stephen marley has just an inspiration just in how they do things at the level that they that they execute you know um so so yeah, but I would say in terms of close as an impact, I work with Naomi, like her first singles up to Paradise Plum, 
um, like I was there for that um, and literally these are just like we just started hanging out so like you talk about organic so like these things are mostly just organic like just hanging out and like oh yeah da, da, da. oh you know I did this song with Sarah coach and um, this paradise plum idea and like, I'm like yo that's bad so I'm like the sometimes I'm the cheerleader sometimes I'm like the architect sometimes I'm the angel on the shoulder sometimes I'm the you know so I've served different purposes um, for different people but it it's all really in essence to just empower them and however I fit into that however I'm graced to be a part of it or my whatever my assignment is um, I gladly accept it for that time um, I think one of the reasons why it works is that because I'm an artist meaning you know visual artist I've been in the arts for a long time I understand not holding you can't hold on to artists artists are like some relationships you have to let it <laughs> you have to let it go and then it comes back because you know your branch is comfortable right I, you know so I think a lot of times you see like people like me that are like creators cheerleaders architects engineers a lot of time have problems with artists because they are holding on to the art am I artist you get me I made that for that artist but it's like it's like a child you know you have a child I have a child it's like you have to let them go right and do their thing and when they need you they'll take their time and come back around or when them just want to come sit on and talk or whatever so I think that's how my relationships are with everybody it's like easy like that you know I'm there you want help all right you ready to do a show cool you know all right you don't want to do that you want to work with that person no problem I'll do the flyer for you if you want you get me and I, I think that's why I'm easy because I, I'm an artist in and of myself so I, I'm whole without anybody in the in the in my own creativity you know now, if nobody not coming we can sit on and draw something or paint something or make an edit to a song or do you know so I, I think it works good that way that we we have like a that's of like a very free flowing thing with all of the artists that I work with there's there's no pressure nothing is owed nothing is promised we spoke so much about the things that you did about the things that you're doing I would love to close this off with because I am pretty sure that even at this point in time you already have visions for what you're gonna do so tell me what is coming up or do you have any ideas or plans um, you know for the f one of the first times in my life, I'm so focused on the things that are rolling, like Dubwise, The Shrine, um, my career as a DJ, mm -hmm. re representing Dubwise and myself, um, that I'm kind of at a little place where, um, and you know, I also have like a Haitian party that I started doing in Miami called Tap Tap, which is really exciting. Like it's an awesome party. Big up DJ Bullet. Big up K9. These are people that like Reggaeville. These are like the the stars of the Haitian music world, like in terms of DJing. And um, it's such a pleasure to work with them and learn their culture and stuff. So Tap Tap has been my latest thing, and it's again, it's like a it's like a cultural discovery. I think I've said this before. I'm like a like I'm like a nerd, like a history history culture nerd, in the presentation of DJ event promoter right so really i'm just curious you know i'm just culturally curious um i was curious about afro when i heard it i was like yo this stuff sounds really great my cousins are nigerian they put me onto it um so i got into the haitian space um from the shrine because i started looking at my rsvps I realized a lot of the surnames were like haitian surnames i'm like yo there's a lot of haitian people coming to this thing maybe i should do something just for them yeah. And t I talked to DJ Bullet, my friend Jones, who I went to high school with, and we started doing that. So Tap Tap and that Haitian music and all of this, these events, it, the music is blended. It's not strictly one thing, but it's just cer certain things lead. So with Tap Tap, the Haitian music, Rabodai, Kompa, um, um, Guyat stuff leads, and then the other stuff comes second. With Dubwise Miami, 
reggae leads and we sprinkle it with a little dance a little afro keep it vibes going um and so on and so forth you know shrine afro is first aman afro is first and so fun right now i think having three very successful event brands it's okay it's okay it's okay it's okay, it's okay. yeah so so um i'm nursing those and um and then you know we'll see what's next and also like being a dj at the level um that i uh, aspire to be and that i'm clawing my way up in um big respect to walshy fire because he's like my mentor you know um yeah I, it really takes a lot of work people just see the stage show shellings but to do that and to build the confidence to to just shut down the music and say something and make the crowd go crazy and play a song it's really hours and hours and hours of work and ideating and you know even looking at what other djs have done in the past and so on and so forth so being a dj really takes a lot of work there's so much music that you have to like get incorporate so your thing that gets stale and you know uh, big up my son because he puts me on to so much music you know judah is like a music guy so he is daddy you gotta play this like i'm telling you you yeah you play million dollar baby they're gonna go crazy you know you know so 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 yeah so it's right now it's just that it's just those things f for now um i'm trying to think if i have if i have anything i'm secretly working on that i can share but um nah yeah yeah we're not ready we're not ready yeah a little bit right now yeah a little bit right now yeah yeah the sun's shining the weather is sweet yeah <laughs> munchie big up yeah, so thank you for your work. Like a build on brand, branding, branding, okay. branding, thank heart, you. heartening, heartening. <laughs> All right. Enough love and respect. Yeah, thank you so much, Jason. Me bad, me sick, me reggae feel. 